right now we are going to see how we can gather emails for a certain company or a domain. Remember, people are always weak at security. If we manage to send some malicious program to someone working in a company and they run that program, we got our way in. We can also use emails in something like a brute force attack. We can use them in the username fields. There are many ways this could be useful, but for now, let us just see how we can get them. Since emails are public information, we can test this on any domain we want. To get emails, we're going to check out two different options. A tool called the Harvester, that's installed in Cal Linux, and a website called hunter.io. Let's start with Harvester first, so open up your terminal, and to just run the help menu from the Harvester, we can type the tool name. So just type the Harvester with capital H and press enter. And this will output us with a smaller help menu, just like the Wattweb tool did once we specified its name. We get its banner and some of the options that we can run. It tells us since we tried to run it with just the name of the program that there is an error, the following arguments are required. So we need to specify the domain. But before we specify the domain, let us just run the bigger help menu so we can see all of our available options. Okay, great, here it is. So we get the domain option, so we need to specify either a company name or domain name to search. This is the limit, limit of search results, which is default equal to 500. And all of these other options are not really of interest to us besides this last source option. And this last source option we specify with dash B and we specify where we want to search for emails. Now we can either specify one of these. We can, for example, specify we want to search for Twitter, LinkedIn, Bing, Google, or we can simply just specify all and it will go through all of these in search for usernames, hosts, and emails. So let's try it out. If I clear the screen, type the harvester, and first thing we need to specify is dash D for the domain. And for this test, I will go with this domain right here, which is another university domain. You can go either with this one or you can pick any website that you want and use it instead. So if I specify the harvester dash D, then the domain name, the next option that I want to specify is dash B. And remember, dash B option is the source. So where we want to search for the emails, host names and usernames. And let us for the first try specify all. And the last option is dash L, which is the limit that is set by default to be 500. So we can either specify more than that or less than that, or we can simply just not specify dash L at all. And it will just by default scan 500 results. So if we leave it just like this and I press here enter, the running of this command will take some time. It will search for different results. It will search for host names. It will search for usernames and it will also search for emails. As we can see down here, it says searching 300 results and this will go up to 500 since we are using the default dash L option, which is 500 results. And it seems that we already got some users found. Here are some of the names as well as what do they do. So this is already some result for us. Let's just wait for all of this to finish and then we will go through all of the results that we managed to gather. Okay, so it has finished. Let us check out what we got as an output. So it searched through a bunch of different platforms as we can see LinkedIn, VirusTotal, Yahoo, Twitter, but it didn't manage to find any results for these platforms. The only thing we got is these users right here. But this is not what we looked for. We wanted to find some email addresses or perhaps some usernames. There is one thing with this Harvester tool. From my personal experience, this tool doesn't always work. There are days when it gives amazing result, but there are days when it doesn't find any emails or any hosts, just like it did in this case. As it says, fail to detect a valid IP address from this domain name. We also didn't get any emails, and I'm talking about scanning this same domain just on two different days. That's why it is always good to 
in case you don't get any results for this tool right now, to scan it multiple times. So if I scan it once again, and instead of dash B all, I will select dash B and scan only from Google to see if I get any different results. And if we still don't manage to get any results, just try the same command either later or tomorrow. And I guarantee you it will usually give you a different result. As we can see, we didn't manage to find anything with this tool. That's why we got a second option. And that second option is a website hunter.io. So let's go and visit that website, open up your Firefox. And in the search bar up here, type hunter.io. It will automatically lead you to this website and we can see right here, we got this search bar where we specify a company domain and we click on find email addresses. But on this website, you must first create an account. And you either have a free account or a paid account. Technically, you can even search without creating an account, but it will only show you first five results and they will be half blurred. Let me show you. If I go here and type the same domain name that we used for Harvester, and let me just enlarge this a little bit so you can see in greater detail, and I click on find email addresses, it will show me first five results and they will all be blurred. Now you can technically try to figure out what these email addresses are, but they will be blurred nonetheless. And down here it also tells you how much results it managed to gather. It managed to gather 315 more results besides these five emails, and those results will be available if you get a paid account. With free account however, let me show you how free account looks like. If I go in sign in, and I sign in to my account. For you, just go and create an account right here and sign in into your free account. Once you create an account, you should be able to have about 50 searches per month with the free account, as it says right here. So we got zero out of 50. And these monthly requests reset in about one month. And as I mentioned, even with free account, you also don't get all the results outputted, but at least the emails that it gives you are not blurred. Let's test it out. If I type the domain name that we used this entire video and click on search, right now I managed to get some of the results right here. So I get up to 10 results with its email addresses and with their names. So we got the name and we also got the email addresses. We get right here which pattern it used to find email addresses. And all of these email addresses are also split into different sections. So if I click on IT engineering, I will even get what type of work does this person do? Project advisor, IT engineering, production engineering, technical editor, as well as their email addresses. We also get from which sources we managed to get these emails. And if I go to all right here and I remove this IT engineering, down here we will also get that there are 310 more results for this domain name. So it is completely up to you whether you think you should get paid version for this. Just keep in mind that with the paid version you get much more results than with the free version. The bad side about the paid version is that it isn't cheap at all. If I go to my account up here and I click on subscription, I can see down here which plan choices I have available to purchase. And you can see 1000 requests per month will be around 50 euros per month. So this is completely up to you. But nonetheless, what we did learn in this video is different ways to gather emails about a certain domain. And I encourage you to also later try out this harvester tool once again, because it does know to give really good results once it works. and. One more thing is that at the end of this section, I will give you a tool that is coded in Python 3 that will be able to gather even more emails from a specified domain. So it will be even better than these two options that I showed you right here, and it will be our own tool. I will give you its code and also show you how to run it and how it works. Okay, good. In the next video, we're going to see how we can install some additional tools that we might need for information gathering. 
See you there.